Okay, so... Before we formally start the program, let us ask the guidance of our Almighty God through a virtual prayer and to be followed by the Philippine National Anthem. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O oh, Divine Master, Grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. And it's in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Lord. So we are all set now, and to formally open the program, let us hear from our vibrant and young Dean of the School of Technology and Computer Studies, Dr. Chana B. Sabinay. Ma'am?
to our active and visionary university president, Dr. Victoria Kinyasa Jr., to his equally dynamic vice presidents, Dr. Rosini Romero, Dr. Erwin Salvachera, and Dr. Leonardo Garcia, our active ITE faculty members, esteemed resource speakers for today's talk, our beloved students, ladies and gentlemen, a pleasant morning to all of us. I warmly welcome our participants, organizers, and our resource speakers, Mr. Joshua Elizabeth Domen and Professor Eileen Vicente to this activity. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, jobs in IT are growing well above average rates of all other occupations. With 11%, in fact, 11% growth expected from 2019 to 2029. Thus, this career talk and discussion on data analytics and algorithms are timely and very relevant, especially this pandemic time. It is also the primary goal of the school that our graduates are equipped with lifelong skills or the what we call the 21st century skills, that is critical thinking and doing, creativity, communication, collaboration, computing, cross-cultural understanding, and career and learning self-reliance. With these seven C's or with these skills, you will be able to win in your chosen career path in information technology. So students, listen, think, and reflect. The new knowledge that you will gain today could be your future. But before we begin this seminar, or shall I say webinar, I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to all of you who sincerely commit to this event to make it a success. This would have been impossible without the steady support of each and everyone present here. Once again, I welcome you all to this activity and good morning. So next, we will have an inspirational message from our very active Okay, so next we will have um, to move on to the plenary session proper for this Tech Talk Series 2021. And to introduce our first resource speaker, let us virtually welcome one of the BICT Rainmaker of Eastern Visayas, Mr. Fernando Quiroz Jr. Sir. <laughs> Thank you, Mom Joy, for a very fancy introduction. Okay, so good morning, everyone. So it is my honor to introduce our first resource speaker for today's Tech Talk series. So currently, he is a project development officer of the Department of Information and Communications Technology, Visayas Cluster 2, under the ICT Industry Bureau. He also worked as a technical support engineer for more than four years. Our speaker obtained his BS degree in information systems from St. Paul's University, Dumaguete in 2012. He pursued his master in information systems degree at the University of the Philippines, Open University. Currently, he is finishing his thesis study as a requirement for the degree of Master of Development Communications in the same university. In 2012, he was awarded as one of the 10 outstanding students of the Philippines of Central Visayas. And in the same year, he was awarded as one of the 30 outstanding students of the Philippines in national level. A recent YouTuber who discusses 
tech tutorials through his channel, Tech Talks with Pambansang IT Guy. Everyone, let us virtually welcome Mr. Joshua E. Domen. Sir? Uh, yes, hello, Sir Ivan and Miss Joy. I hope you can hear me. Yes, sir. Um, we can hear you loud and clear. Um, let me just transfer the hosting to you, sir, so you can share your screen. All right, sir, Evan. So, grabe naman yung introduction. <laughs> May pagandang yeah. talaga introduction, but sige. Thank you very much. And also to Miss Joy for being our moderator no? for this morning. Yes, Pa. So, so I, I think you are good to go, sir. So I can share my screen now. All right. Can you uh, see my screen now? For a while. I'm going to move. All right. Sir Evan and Miss Joy, can you see my screen now? All right, maybe I can uh, start already. So um, good morning to everyone and also to our Dean, no? um, Dr. Chon, uh, for the message and most especially to our students who are also the participants um, for this um, webinar. Um, I am so honored and privileged to be here no? because um, I, I can share my experience because I was once a student of um, information technology as my undergraduate and um, it, um, I mean memories flashback no before we would also always listen to career talks in terms of information technology and now we are in the new normal um, we are having this career talk um, in an online platform <laughs> so um, but still the message remains that um, we will have this um, career talk in information technology. Um, um, IT is really um, a, a big um, field out there. And this is a good um, preparation for our students knowing in case when they graduate and they would um, already earn for a living, then um, they should consider um, being in the IT arena, of course, because they have they have studied and spent um, their time um, in this field. And so um, here I am working in the ICT and we actually look forward to more students, to more workforce in the IT um, industry. All right, so supposedly I, well, I, um, I didn't know that you will introduce me that much, although I, I was, um, I was supposed to introduce, but there's no need for me to introduce because Sir Evan um, has already introduced me so well. <laughs> but um, Sir Evan is also a rainmaker in the ICT. So by the way, um, the ICT here um, in Visayas Cluster 2 involves both regions, um, Region 7 and Region 8. And so that is why um, I have workmates um, staying in Region 8 and Sir Evan is also our rainmaker. Later on, I will talk about um, the Rainmakers program in the ICT. So I am not sure. Um, I think um, I'm not sure if what um, uh, dialect you speak there. I, I, I ask our um, Biliran Provincial Officer, Ma Maria, no, if you know her. And um, she said it's a mix daw of Waray and Bisaya. So maupay nga aga and maayong buntag. Maupay nga aga, yes, sir. Maupay nga aga. But for the benefit of everyone, no, because I cannot speak Waray, then um, ano na lang, Taglish na lang. <laughs> it would be fine, sir. Taglish, all right. Sige. So I will start now. I, I need not to um, reintroduce myself because Sir Evan has introduced a lot. Okay. But before I formally start, um, I want this to be interactive first. So can I ask our students to uh, go to Menti 
www.menti.com. You see on your screen, that's www.menti.com. And then you will be asked for a code. Um, please um, type in 85269370, the digits that you see in the screen. And then you will be led to a question. Um, what, um, what job position will you be in? So... All right, so we will see in real time, no, the answers of our students. Um, do not worry to our students. Um, this is purely anonymous, no? Your names will not be, say, will not be seen. Uh, hindi makikita nila Sir Evan and Miss Joy and all the other teachers kung yung isasagot nyo dyan. But I just want to check. I want to check if um, in the next 10 years, what job position do you envision yourself to be in? Okay, so, so th this is actually a common question that you get when you um, apply for work, no? Um, what job position do you envision yourself to be in in the next 10 years? Um, be honest, um, you can answer in two or three words or one word, just as, as a specific job title that you want to be in. I think we have around 39 or 40 participants, so... Can we ask our um, students to log in to menti.com and answer the question, what job position do you envision yourself to be in in the next 10 years? So, so far, we have not received any, um, any answer yet from our students from BIPSU. So, ayan po mapasok na ang um, answers ng ating mga students. So we have here a um, full stack web developer. Um, we have software engineer. So by the way, here in Menti, no, sa word cloud natin, ang mga bigger fonts are actually have multiple answers compared to the smaller fonts. No? So it means that madami ang sumagot ng software engineer, full stack web developer. How about the others? We only received um, six answers. From our students, then we have around 30 plus participants for this morning. So while waiting, let me um, fix my background. Yana, six answers per in. We have um, CEO, wow, for the next 10 years. Sure, why not? Programmer, what else? Wala na. We only have six participants, six active participants from our webinar. Ayan na, pumapasok na. We also have um, IT instructor. We are we now have 17 answers. Um, IT instructor, programmer, uh, database administrator, okay. Um, a graphic designer. Perhaps this, this has the most number of answers or responses because it has the biggest font here in our word cloud. So a youngster, wala na? No more answers? Professional programmer, ayan. We, we now have um, 22 answers. We, 
We have a new entry, um, game developer. All right. Siguro may mga ma- may hilig dito no, sa mga games. And perhaps one day they wanted to um, develop a game in the future. Mm-hmm. Madami din tayo mga talented na mga um, students in terms of um, graphic design. Kasi madami, pinakamaraming sumagot sa um, pagiging graphic uh, designer. All right. We also have call center agent or contact center agents in the future. All right. No more? So we have um, 26 answers already. So what do we have here? Um, user interface designer or UI designer, all right? For more or less, you have um, similar answers now from our 26 participants, all right. Thank you very much to our students for answering. So now I have, um, I have, um, we have yielded positive results now of um, students from BIPSU who would like to enter um, the IT industry in the future. So allow me to send this. Thank you for answering. So, um, th- and thank you for letting me know that um, you wanted to enter the IT into the IT BPM industry in the future because most of your answers actually all of the answers are actually part and parcel of the IT BPM industry. And so I am glad, and, and in behalf of the ICT, I am glad that you have, um, you, you want to practice what you have learned, no? Perhaps for four or five years in your school. Maybe um, some of you we are about to graduate, siguro, no? One of these days. So congratulations in advance, and we look forward to seeing you um, here in the IT BPM um, sector. Now, um, maybe perhaps you wanted to enter the industry, and so I would like to um, show you some um, of the younger Filipinos who actually have, um, who made it big in terms of um, the IT BPM industry. So they just um Taglitang ha. I think I can mute a participant. But I think I cannot. Sige lang. But um these are actually some the one these people that you see on your screen right now are perhaps um maybe you have encountered them in, in some news um, news articles or perhaps you have seen them um, come across your um, news feeds because these um, young Filipinos actually made it big in the IT BPM industry. Take for one, we have Kevin Atienza. Um, he is part of the 0.15% of the best programmers in the world. Um, currently holds the second spot um, globally, huh? second spot globally for the Google Code Jam uh, in 2016. Um, a year before, he was 25th in 2015. Then the year after, um, he placed second. And what does that mean? It means that um, he has an um, over-the-top um, talent and skills and knowledge in terms of programming because Google Code Jam is actually a competition for young programmers. And if you could imagine um, a Filipino born and raised in the Philippines now works in Google. Uh, he is currently the number one in Southeast Asia um, as the best programmer. So imagine we have um, 11 countries in the ASEAN and um, the number one programmer is actually a Filipino. So um, he founded um, um, the group of software engineers called Caliber. Um, they are uh, present here in the Philippines, but 
um, Atienza is actually um, working for Google. Um, he is now the one creating the examination or um, the coding guidelines for um, for um, the same the same competition that he joined in in 20, 2015 and 2016. That's Google Code Jam. So that's one thing that we should be proud of as being a Filipino. Then perhaps you might have also um, learned or you might have um, known of Isabel She, the, the one in the second um, picture. She is very young. Um, she, she learned um, programming when she was um, just 10 years old. And then um, years after, I think he is, she is, I mean, she is already 15 years old by now. And she started um, a company and she started a startup wherein she would um, teach um, programming to other younger people and to the, to the women of the Philippines. So, so she is from Antipolo City. And the third um, picture is um, a Filipino-American. He is um, Bobby Murphy. And if you could um, notice the logo behind him, no? that is actually the logo of Snapchat because um, Bobby Murphy is the co-founder of Snapchat. And um, he currently is an internet entrepreneur and a software engineer. And um, right now, his take is that he is the second youngest billionaire. Um, he was born in 1988 to a Filipino mother and an American father. And perhaps um, you can become the likes of this um, younger Filipino someday, the next years to come. All right. But if you are not satisfied with such, then perhaps I can um, introduce you to some of the famous Filipinos who made it big and who made it um, so well in the information uh, technology na industry, no? First, we have, um, you might not know this, this might be a surprise, or perhaps maybe your teachers have already um, told you about this. Um, the lead programmer of Microsoft Excel is a Filipino, the earliest version of um, the Microsoft Excel, no? Um, the brainchild of what we are using right now as the spreadsheet program. The person behind that, the person who is the lead programmer of that, is actually a Filipino. And um, I could not share to you um, his picture and I could not share to you his name because he actually have, uh, he has um, a non-disclosure agreement with Microsoft. And so this is actually an open secret of who he is, but his initials are uh, JG, letter J and letter G. Um, he once worked first in Apple. Uh, he worked directly with um, Steve Jobs. And a um, few, um, few years after, he was pirated by Microsoft, by Bill Gates himself, to develop um, Microsoft Excel the earliest version of the Microsoft Excel. And so, thanks to a Filipino, um, we have this Microsoft Excel that we enjoy right now. My fellow teachers enjoy right now because Microsoft Excel is really a big help, of course, in terms of um, creating the grades of students and everything else. So, um, if you would ask where this person is right now, he is back in the Philippines. He started um, um, startup um, companies. He founded um, some startup companies, and now he has some incubations for startups. So once again, I could not disclose his name because of a non-disclosure agreement of him with um, Microsoft, although this is actually an open secret. His initials are JG. Maybe you can look it up. And then um, we also have another Filipino 
who is infamous. When we talk about infamous, he is or someone is famous, but he or she is famous because of something quite negative or um, famous um, in something that is not so good to hear about, but still, he or she is famous. So that person is um, Onel de Guzman. Um, he is the creator of the love bug or the I love you virus, no? Um, I could still, I could um, vividly remember when I was younger. It was in 2000 when this became a very big issue, a national news, because this certain Onel de Guzman, the creator of the I Love You virus, has just inflicted billions of dollars worldwide. He created a, compu a, a computer virus, no? Through emails, the subject line is um, "love letter for you," and there is an attachment. And once you um, once you open such attachment, then um, the um, the virus will spread because it will get the contacts in your um, in your um, computer and will resend and repopulate the email. So if you could imag imagine um, Pentagon in the U.S shut down its operations because of this um, virus. Um, it is believed to be one of the um, deadliest <laughs> or most expensive um, computer virus that has ever been invented or has been created because to remove such, it, um, it, it, um, it, it needs... Um, it needs 15 billion US dollars to remove, uh, to remove totally the virus. And Onel de Guzman was actually an undergraduate of AMA um, in Metro Manila. So supposedly, um, it was his thesis or his capstone project, his I Love You virus, but um, um, the professors did not agree on it. Even I myself personally would not agree. Um, for a virus to become a thesis. And so the rest is history. And um, during that time, there was no um, law that would penalize him and his act. No? And as a matter of fact, a new law was created months after um, this I love you virus spread out. I think um, this virus spread um, in May. To, uh, May 2000 and a new law, which is the e-commerce law, um, has been um, um, filed or has been um, developed no? uh, um, to, to counteract um, other and future um, attacks that might happen. So in July 2000, the e-commerce law was enacted. All right, so that is something that we might be proud of as Filipinos because who would have known a Filipino who is so good in this was able to gain some attention worldwide or globally. Although um, such um, attention might be um, something negative, no? It is a negative connotation, of course, if you spread virus. But if you could imagine a, a pure-blooded Filipino was created was able to create such um, script or such virus. And um, currently, there are rumors that say that um, Onel de Guzman, the creator of the I Love You virus, has been um, tapped by Microsoft and some other um, vulnerability protection agencies to work for them. So those are rumors. I'm not sure if that is true. But Mr. Onel de Guzman has really um, paved the way for Filipinos to be recognized in terms of these things. And then um, we also have um, an inventor of microchips, kinda the one you see on your um, right-hand side. That is Mr. Justado Banatao. Um, he is from Cagayan. He, he earned his... Um, he earned his um, undergraduate in engineering from Mapua University. And then he worked in the U.S. after, and he developed a lot of microchips. He 
created a chip for IBM. He created a transceiver chip. Um, he created an Ethernet CMOS, no? The CMOS battery that you see in your um, computers, no? With silicon coupler data link control and transceiver. So um, actually, he has done a lot. And even um, Windows graphics accelerators, he created such. And um, he is back in the Philippines and he has, um, um, he has developed some also startups. He also incubated startups. He's back now in the country to share his talent and to share his um, knowledge. And perhaps this is an open secret, no? but we have a lot of Filipino animators. We have a lot of talented um, and skillful animators who are Filipinos who develop um, cartoons and animations that have been watched all over worldwide. If you could remember Finding Nemo, no? the very first Finding Nemo. Um, if you could notice in the aquarium or in the, um, in the tank no? where Nemo was um, trapped along with his friends. Oh, not really Nemo, but the father of Nemo, sorry. Um, there, there is um, a Bahay Kubo there. So that is actually to give some international attention that a Filipino, actually the surname is Mr. Bohol, um, is one of the lead animators who um, developed and um, created the animation for Finding Nemo. And the list goes on. I think almost um, all, if not all, um, animations and cartoons, movies with animations, um, there are actually um, a talented Filipino behind such. Um, Disney's Lilo, Lilo and Stitch, um, Disney's Winnie the Pooh, um, Hotel Transylvania, and other Pixar films. There are actually Filipino animators who work behind such. Okay, so that is one thing that um, we should be proud of as Filipinos because we have a lot of talented and bright um, Filipinos who made it big and um, who made us all proud for being Filipinos. They made it big not only in our country, but also in the whole wide universe. <laughs> all right. Now, um, just last year, um, the Department of Labor and Employment and Jobstreet.com came up with um, the list of the highest paying jobs in our country. All right. And if you could notice on the list, around two or three of the top 10 um, highest paying jobs in the country belong to the IT BPM industry. Um, being an art director could also um, be part of the IT BPM industry, especially if he or she uses um, digital technologies, no? If he uses um, digital arts for his arts. But if you could notice in number five and number six, um, computer programmers earn 43,000 pesos, while systems analysts and designers earn 42,000 pesos for an entry level job um, in companies here in the Philippines. All right, so um, good thing that. Um, you as students are um, learning programming and lear learning um, systems analysis because in the future that could actually catapult you to earning really big time as compared to other um, professions or other fields in the future. All right. And also, according to the World Economic Forum, when we talk about um, work-life balance, um, most of the IT jobs are actually the best jobs um, in the world. So meaning to say when we talk about work-life balance, um, the salary is high and um, you also have time for yourself. You could balance your recreation, 
uh, you could balance your um, your happy time, de ba? So the, according to the World Economic Forum, these ten jobs are actually um, they have been rated as the best um, um, jobs in the world in terms of work-life balance. And if you could check at the first spot. Um, being a data scientist is part and parcel of the IT IPM industry. Um, actually, do it good. And uh, we also have SEO manager, search engine optimization. This is also part of the IT BPM industry. So, um, being a social media manager, that is also um, an IT BPM industry job. Um, UX designer. I believe there was one who answered earlier in our um, survey, no, or in our poll, that he wants to be um, a UI or an interface designer. Then you belong to the seventh um, best job. Uh, then we also have digital marketing manager and web developer, part of the top ten. So as you can see, around seven or six or seven um, um, jobs in that, uh, six to seven jobs in this list belong to the IT BPM industry, All right? So in the future, then, um, you will enjoy working and living your life at the same time because you will um, enter the arena of the IT BPM industry. And I believe this will convince you to... Um, to work in the future, in the chosen career, in the chosen field that you will be going into. All right. Now let me um, let me introduce you to the IT BPM industry. Diba? Um, we have a lot of industries, not only here in the Philippines, but also in the world. Um, we have industry examples like. Um, the agriculture industry, no, where you you yield crops, vegetables and fruits, and even fishing, um, poultry. Um, that is, of course, um, the agriculture industry. Then we have the tourism industry, diba? wherein um, when tourists visit um, um, places, of course, it generates jobs. Um, it, it, it paves way for hotels and inns to be um, to mushroom in certain areas, especially if such area has high tourism potentials, then it would create indirect jobs and direct jobs. Then we also have the healthcare industry, no? Like, um, say, for example, um, um, patients would go to a certain country to, to, to have some operations, to have some medical processes because this country or doctors of this country are known uh, to operate very good um, in this um, in this area or in this field or in this specialization. Then we also have the IT BPM industry. Okay. Um, IT BPM in industry is um, quite the newest industry that any country has in their um, in their GDP, no, or in their um, economy, because this is actually a 21st century na industry. There was no IT BPM industry before. There was a manufacturing industry, wherein um, um, products and um, mostly products are manufactured. But here in the IT BPM industry, services are actually um, the main breathing point for this industry. Services um, all related to information technology with the use of computers, with the use of devices. Um, that is the IT BPM industry. And to make it more um, specific, um, what really is the IT BPM? Um, information Technology and Business Process Management, or ITBPM, is when foreign brands, multinationals, and even startups engage the services of a third-party vendor to manage certain aspects of their work operations. 
These are often functions that might be deemed essential but are not part of the organization's core business like accounting, customer support, uh, logistics, research, and telemarketing. So companies often choose to outsource work as it offers a number of benefits that help them create value and transform their um, business uh, businesses through decreased costs, strengthened global presence, and um, everything else. So, um, so companies, no bigger and huge companies um, out of the country or outside of the Philippine geography actually tend to um, outsource um, jobs in other countries because um, the very first reason is because it is cheaper. Because when they do such services in their um, countries or, or in their, of course, in their areas, the labor is really high. But um, when they just outsource these services to other countries with um, cheaper um, lab labor um, cost, then it will really give them um, cost-saving initiatives. Another reason for them why they outsource is that um, they create global presence, no? Because when you um, outsource your um, the works in your companies in other countries, it is as if that you are um, being globally recognized because you have um, you you um, you have your presence in such country who would have thought that you would wouldn't be there um, present. But it gives you recognition um, for other countries. Okay, diba? when when you are actually um, globally um, known, then that is a point for you to be um, recognized. That is a point for you to be known throughout the world, and more clients will um, ask for your um, company's um, help because um, you are globally recognized when you outsource. Okay, your um, work. In the Philippines, um, the IT BPM sector is actually part of the services industry. No? The IT BPM is part and parcel of the services industry. Um, it started in the 1980s here in the country with basic encoding, um, in-house development, and programming. So more than 30 years down the road, um, the industry now offers more complex and varied services that go beyond traditional call center work and utilize digital um, platforms and solutions. It is considered as the country's largest job generator and one of its biggest private sector employers, creating jobs for 1.3 million Filipinos, while indirectly impacting close to 4.2 million more people across the nation. So if you could see, the IT BPM um, industry here in the country is very, is very strong because um, it, has the country's, uh, it, it is the country's largest job generator. So a lot of jobs have been created for Filipinos to work in the IT BPM sector. There are 1.3 million Filipinos who are working directly in the IT BPM sector, perhaps as contact center agents, as programmers, as developers, while there are 4.2 million more um, Filipino people who also benefit from such, um, from indirect jobs, no? just like, um, say for example, when you construct, um, when you construct um, a BPO in a certain location, no? and chances are um, the, the BPO operate for 24 hours. So what happens is that um, convenience stores, like perhaps 7-Eleven, who operates 24-7 um, a day, will also sprout and mushroom in such area because there are customers who are alive and kicking at the wee hours of the dawn or, in the, um, uh, or at midnight, no? So even if this 7-Eleven or mini stop and other convenience stores are not directly um, in the IT BPM sector because they are not programmers, they are not um, contact center agents, but um, 
these people, these who work in the IT BPM sector, also um, also go to their stores to buy some stuff, go to um, restaurants to eat um, at the wee, uh, the wee hours. So they also get benefits from such. So around 4.2 uh, more people are indirectly um, benefited by the IT BPM industry. All right? Now, um, what are the key services offered in the IT BPM industry? We have the contact center and the BPO. So usually, you know, perhaps your um, common term that you know is the BPO or the business process outsourcing. No? So BPO is just actually um, um, a part of the IT BPM industry. Although BPO is very famous here in the Philippines, as a matter of fact, um, we are the number one um, contact center and BPO provider in the world. No? Um, before it was India, but um, we are so well, uh, we are so good. Filipinos are good in terms of English speaking and our ability, and so we are now the number one in terms of the contact center and BPO. But um, um, the call center industry or the call center sector is just um, a part of the entire IT BPM industry because there is a common misconception, no, that. Once you work in the IT BPM um, industry, you they say that ah call center ah, call center agent kapala, but that is actually a common misconception. When you work in the IT BPM industry, it doesn't mean and it doesn't necessarily um, um, tantamount to being a call center agent alone. Although there is nothing wrong to become a call center agent, call center agents earn a lot, no as compared to other um, jobs that we have in the Philippines. Um, because there are, no, there are other people who would, um, ano ba, they would downgrade or they would um, look down to um, some call center agents. No? Ah, you are just a call center agent or what. But to be truth be told, um, call center agents really earn big time. And... Um, it's not easy to become a call center agent. You have to, um, your voice is your um, capital, no? Puhunan mo ang bosses mo. And, um, but that's just one. BPO um, is just a sector under the IT BPM. We also have other services like information technology services um, in terms of application development, um, infrastructure, and IT support, no? Um, we also have growth services like system integration, automation, um, IoT enablement languages. So companies outsource um, services in the country um, to, to develop software, to develop application, to, to develop uh, mobile apps, um, to develop websites because um, the, uh, the, the labor here is cheap, no? Although um, for them, they consider it cheap Mura lang or barato lang magpa um, trabaho sa mga Filipinos. But here um, in the Philippines, their cheap is already um, high for us, or the the salary is ready enough and more than enough for us. No, in the Philippine setting. Then we also have the health information management services um, in the IT BPM, wherein. Um, there are um, payer services, there is preventive health, there is remote healthcare management and provider services, no? There are applications and other um, healthcare information management systems, no? That are um, actually being developed um, under the IT BPM industry. Then we also have the animation services. Um, this, has, um, this has been present actually already. Um, even before the IT BPM industry um, boomed in our country, there are a lot already of talented Filipinos who um, who create animations. Before um, pencil lang siya, no? sketching, and then ultimately it was um, transitioned into digital animations. So Filipinos need not to go actually abroad, need not to go to Japan and the U.S. to do animation services. Um, there are actually um, um, uh, 2D animations from Disney 
that was um, created in the Philippines, um, Hercules and the likes of other cartoons were um, created by Filipino animators here in the country. And you just not know that, but that is actually an open secret. Then we also have game development services as part of the IT BPM industry, um, um, virtual reality, AR, VR, gamification, game development. Um, these services are also being outsourced offshore in the country. So we have a lot of game studios that are actually um, present in the country. Then we also have global in-house centers, and we um, included in the global in-house centers are F&A, um, industry-specific services, no? mga, mga technical support or IT support for telecom, healthcare, insur insurance, and pharmaceuticals. So um, global in-house centers are actually um, the mga IT, na, um, uh, IT departments or IT offices inside um, a certain office. And if you could imagine, all, almost all or mostly all of companies actually have their own IT departments or um, IT groups no? within their organization. Diba? We have the um, um, HR group no? that perhaps um, does the human resources or the talent acquisition stuff for the company. They are the ones in charge of hiring. We have the HR. No? Then we also have the admin, per perhaps the financial um, duties and obligations, they are the ones in charge. Then we also have the IT department, no? Or the IT office, they are the ones in charge for the um, information technology per se, the needs of the companies. And even in government agencies, we now have IT departments, diba? So these are examples of global in-house centers. And usually, um, IT support are, are now being... Um, are now being outsourced, no? Say, for example, there is a company in Switzerland who asks for, um, who outsources IT support um, from Filipinos. That is actually possible with, of course, we now have newer technologies right now and remoting is the key to do this stuff, no? Like, how, how do you, how could you be able to perform some IT technical duties if you're not able to do it physically we now have the remoting, okay? And then, um, once again, these are the subsectors of the IT BPM industry. We have the contact center and BPO. This is the common misconception. If you work in the IT BPM industry, it also means that um, you are a call center agent, but that is wrong, that is very wrong. Being a call center agent or contact center agent is just a parcel, just a pinch um, of the entire IT BPM industry. Information technology um, sector, um, development, no? um, programming that is part there, health information management service, animation and game development, and global in-house centers. So once you work for this um, sectors in the future, um, even if you work um, from your homes, even if you don't really directly um, work physically in a company, then you actually belong and you will belong to the IT BPM industry. And so, um, why should companies um, why should companies um, consider the Philippines um, as an IT BPM destination? So, since 2010, the Philippines has been the leading voice BPM services provider, surpassing all other markets. And uh, to get it straight, we actually, um, we have um, overtaken India no? in terms of the voice BPM because once upon a time, India was um, the number one um, contact center provider in the world until... Um, global companies have recognized the talents of Filipinos in terms of speaking English. We have um, English since the American colonization. Um, um, English was our medium of instruction in, in education no? until today. 
But in India, in, in India kasi, um, they only use English because um, for them to understand each other. Like, um, there are a lot, a lot of dialects in India, more than the dialects here in the Philippines, and they don't have Filipino as the national language. Unlike ours, no? thanks to Mr. Um, President Quezon for enacting no? um, Filipino being our base um, language along with English. But um, in India, they don't have such. And so um, they only use um, English to communicate in their day-to-day -day lives. But English is not part of their studies like English um, syntax and semantics um, or grammar um, are not part of their um, academic curricula as compared to us. And so that's one thing perhaps that you should be thankful for. We are really good in terms of um, speaking English. And so we are the, the best of the best um, voice service providers in terms of the IT BPM um, industry. Now, what are the advantages of, um, in, of um, IT BPM in the Philippines? We have robust and diverse talents, as in really, really skillful and talented um, um, Filipinos. Even before, no? Um, even before when there was no senior high school yet, no? There were no vocational courses. Um, Filipinos tend to graduate younger as expected. Even I myself was able to graduate at only 19 years old when I earned my degree. And so we could say that um, since, since Filipinos are younger in terms of um, graduating, of earning their degrees, then they get more experiences. And so you have robust and diverse talents. And Filipinos are known to be skillful. Like Filipinos do not, um, Filipinos do not, um, um, they, they look for some other alternatives to earn an income. They don't just stick. To one, um, we always believe that we must have some um, fallbacks. We must have some alternatives no, for us to gain income. So that's one thing that we could say why we are, we have diverse talents. Then there is um, the Philippines as a cost competitive advantage wherein um, our services um, labor market here is quite cheaper, really cheaper. Um, compared to other countries, no? Although um, our labor um, prices or our labor workforce price is cheap, our skills are also not cheap, okay? It doesn't mean that we have, um, we have cheaper um, services market. It doesn't mean that um, when we work, um, we, we, we give our all actually. We are known to be really skillful, right? Um, there is also an expanding infrastructure, especially that we have no, um, the priority program of um, our president, the build, build, build. A lot of bridges, a lot of infrastructure. Um, Facebook um, is coming in to our um, framework, in our um, broadband framework. So one of these days or one of these years, um, we might expect more than three, no? since we already have DITO, we might expect more than three um, telcos or internet service providers or ISPs in the Philippine market. Okay, then we have strong linkages with government, academe, and industry. It means that um, there are a lot of organizations, private and public partnerships, and the academe are being regulated or they be being observed by some other government agencies and industry partners so that we could catapult into being um, the best IT BPM um, industry um, in the world. We, and then also another Philippine or the greatest um, advantage is that we are leading in voice capabilities and growing in IT and non-voice business processing. Um, we were known to be so good in um, voice um, BPM, no? We, are, we, we really are good in I'm conversing in English, in transacting, thus the call center agents. But then, because of this, um, clients or um, companies have recognized that, oh, we also have um, other um, sectors that Filipinos are good at. We are also good in programming, 
we are good in um, development, in applications, in website. And so at a cheaper cost, um, clients tend to, or companies tend to, um, for a while, all right. Um, clients tend to offshore or to outsource their services here in our country. So what they think of as cheap, no? They, they already consider cheap, um, 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 cheap here, um, prices or salaries or wages for our um, services sector workers. But in the Philippine setting, um, what they pay for us is already more than enough. Um, uh, the salaries are already high for us here in the Philippines, all right? As you can see in our, uh, this is the sector share of the Philippine GDP. Um, in 2019, 60% belong to the services sector while 30% um, belongs to the industry sector while 8% um, belong to the agriculture sector. So um, this is just a fact, no? Um, in Asia, um, countries tend to um, the usual route, no? Because countries in Asia they follow the market in China, wherein first um, they, their um, their GDP accounts for bigger um, percentage in terms of agriculture, and then um, they they set off agriculture and went to the manufacturing industry. That is the trend in Asia. But in the Philippines, what we did is that we set off agriculture, but we went to the services sector. So that is quite um, a debate right now if we really are following um, the right path. We, we did not follow um, those of other Asian countries no? who are now part of the ti tiger economies or dragon economies and so it is too early actually to say that we did the right path that we, co we we concentrated on the services sector rather than the industry or manufacturing sector but um in terms of um jobs generation we really did well um in terms of this services sector we have employed uh, more than a million um jobs generated and four million other indirect jobs um, as you can see, um, the ITBPM contribution to the Philippine economy, 1.23 million direct jobs and 4.08 million indirect jobs. Um, significant contributor to the local economy with 24.7 billion US dollars in revenues, no? 13% global share out of the entire ITBPM um, economy or market in the world, we have given 13% of such were, from, were coming from the Philippines. Okay? Advocate of countryside development with 280,000 jobs in 23 provinces. And this is true, no? Um, we did not, um, companies did not concentrate na lang in central hubs like Manila, Cebu, and Davao. Um, there is a growing um, trend of creating BPOs or IT BPMs in the countryside. So you could see now um, BPOs perhaps in Dumaguete or in Bohol, um, in other cities in Tacloban, there are now um, um, BPOs. I'm not sure in Biliran if we already have a BPO, but um, there will come a time that if um, Perhaps the government or the local government will consider the ITBPM in, for their citizens, then chances are um, there will be a BPO locator that will sprout and mushroom in your area. Then the ITBPM is also an enabler of support industries for food, for banking, for real estate. There are other um, interlinked or intertwined um, industries that the IT BPM sector um, help or they support, diba? There are some indirect jobs that the IT BPM support. There are, um, there are IT jobs in almost all sectors. Um, when, you, when, you go, uh, when you go to the food industry, 
um, um, there is um, perhaps companies tend to have the, um, websites developed for their companies or they want um, an application for their foods to be known of or, or perhaps um, HR and attendance checking for their industries and so on and so forth. In almost all um, sectors, even in agriculture, um, information technology and business process management is already present. Okay, they are present in all sectors. Now, um, we will take a look at the Tholons um, Digital Nations list, no? So Tholons is an independent body based in the United Kingdom and they check which countries do good and which countries actually outperform in terms of the IT BPM industry. So they check on the talent skills and quality, are, they, are there available talents? They also check on the business catalyst, no? Are there already clients present? Are there also other um, offshore companies that would like to um, invest? Then they also check the cost. Is it expensive there or is it cheap there? Is the labor cost there cheap? Then also they check the infrastructure. Are, are there um, internet service providers? Are there IT parks? Are there... Um, buildings and roads that can help them to, um, to, to, um, um, to invest and create um, BPOs in their locations. Then they also check the risk and quality of life. No, They, um, they try to um, also, because when you work in the IT BPM industry, chances are um, your health or there are also health hazards no? because um, um, Time zones might not meet. Um, it is morning in America, and you should work um, in the in the time frame of America. But um, it is already evening, or it is already midnight, no? So they also check if there are hospitals or medical facilities available. Then they also check digital and innovation. Uh, is there AI already being implemented, or are there startups? Are there innovations um, there? Then they also check super cities. Are there major cities or major hubs in such country that can help when investors try to um, create um, a company or create um, um, a branch or create um, an office in your location? Are there cities that could support such? And also they check on the po population. Are there enough um, talented people? Are there enough graduates in the IT BPM industry that could help? And so in 2018, they made, they made a list and the Philippines ranked number two in terms of the IT BPM industry according to Tholon. So 2018 was our best year. It is the best year for the country and we're just right behind India. But there is also a but, of course. In 2019, we fell a few notches down we ranked fifth from um, the second spot in 2018. But still, if you could imagine, no, we have beaten other countries that are so good in IT, just like Singapore, our neighboring countries, no? Singapore, Malaysia, Vietnam. But if you could also imagine, we have beaten the likes of Mexico, of Japan. Diba? So in terms of the IT BPM industry, the Philippines is actually one of the leading. Okay, So that's a those are tops in our box now. We are really good um, in terms of the IT BPM industry. And just last year, during the pandemic, they also did um, the survey. They created the list and we fell one rank down. We are currently now in number six. They haven't, um, they haven't issued the 2021 list yet. But we, we fell down again, one, one notch down, although we are still part of the top 10, all right? We are still part of the top 10. And so there are some factors to consider and reconsider because um, um, we are getting left behind in terms of artificial intelligence and startups. So these are the priority um, sectors that we should um, consider not only by the government, no, but all other private companies and institutions and even schools. 
so that we can get back on top, although we are still on top. But 2018 was our best year for being um, the second, all right, in terms of the IT BPM industry. So going back now to 2018, if you could imagine you now, we have beaten Brazil and the United States in terms of the IT BPM industry. Um, COVID just so happened, and so... Um, we kind of um, left something, no? although um, the IT BPM um, sector really um, helped us. No? It is a good contributor um, during the COVID-19 pandemic. No? While all other industries shut down, like tourism, because travel was restricted, uh, manufacturing, some, some uh, manufacturing companies sh shut down because it's too costly to perform operations. But the IT BPM industry was there, was still alive. Um, IATF allowed the IT BPM sector to, um, to, um, to still work while all other industries were closed, while the, mo the, while the malls were closed, while other um, stores were closed, the IT um, BPM, the BPO companies were still open because um, without the IT BPM industry, then our economy might have um, fallen so down than what we have right now. All right. So thanks to the IT BPM industry. Okay, Deva. Um, the co the contact center agents were also asked to. They can work from home as long as they have. Um, stable internet connection. They were asked to bring laptops or th their company's computers. So the IT BPM sector was still alive. And as you can see, um, th um, these are the super cities. No? So these are the super cities. These are the top 15. Um, when you are a super city, it means that you can... Um, you can um, provide you're a good destination for the IT BPM sector to flourish. And on the fourth spot is Manila, Metro Manila. Although in 2019, they ranked second, no? but right now they rank fourth. And here in Cebu City, I'm currently based in Cebu City, we are still part of the top 15, although in 2019, we ranked 12. And there are also other cities belonging in the top 100. You can look it up, um, even Davao City, Cagayan de Oro, Bacolod de Iloilo, Santa Rosa, Laguna, they are part of the top 100 super cities. And when you work in, the, um, in this industry someday, um, there will be a lot of organizations that can help you, that can help your companies and even you as individuals. We have the IBPAP or the IT and Business Process Association of the Philippines. We also have... Um, the NICP or the National ICT Confederation of the Philippines because NICP is actually um, uh, the, the ICT councils. No, There are ICT councils um, in the country in, in major locations in the area that support the ICT industry. Um, they, they, there is private and public partnerships in, the, in NICP. No? So the ICT supports such. So this is an organization for all ICT councils. We have the Philippine Software Industry Association or the PSIA um, for, for the software industry, for the programmers, for the developers. You have an association for you. Then we have um, the ACPI or the Animation Council of the Philippines Incorporated. If you are animators, then um, this organization is for you. We also have the HEMAP or the Healthcare Information Management Association of the Philippines in terms of the healthcare information um, industry. We also have the Contact Center Association of the Philippines or CCAP or CCAP. They are in charge of, um, they are the organization for all members of the IT uh, or of the BPOs for call centers and for contact centers. Then we have the GDAP or the Game Developers Association of the Philippines. No? Um, and this is an organization for all game developers in the Philippines. Then we also have the P site or the Philippine um, um, IT um, Philippine Society of IT Educators. No, perhaps you have 
um, come across of this. Perhaps our teachers, si Sir Evan and si Miss Joy, they have heard of this. The peace site, um, baka merong um, uh, chapter sa inyo, but um, this is, of course, um, an, a society for IT educators. So someday, um, as, as days grow the number, as years grow the number that you are, you students have already graduated and you, have, you are already working in the IT industry, you will, there are chances that you will meet um, members of these organizations. And these organizations are actually recognized by government. These are also partners of the ICT in our, um, in our um, mandate no? to help elevate the digital economy of the country. And it, it works if we have teamwork. Um, not only from the public, but also in the private sectors. Okay, so um, according to Ched, in the academic year 2018-2019, the number one or the most enrolled um, program DAO for males is information technology. All right, so Bachelor of Science in Information Technology or all other um, courses related to such like computer science or information systems. So there are a lot of males now who are enrolled into, the, into such program. While for females, it ranks fifth. Okay? Sa mga kababaihan natin dyan, um, um, information technology is the fifth most enrolled program for such school year. And so... We will now go to the reasons why you should pursue a career in information technology. Okay, you are currently now, um, you are students in these fields. Um, you, are, um, you are learners in this industry someday where you will land your jobs into. And so I will give you the reasons why you should continue pursuing your career in this field or in this um, area, in this specialization. Number one is that um, when you work in the IT BPM industry, there is low cost of education. Although I'm not saying no, that it is cheap um, to, to learn or to, to um, study BS information technology, but in some other countries kasi, in some other um, places, they don't need um, a diploma. They don't need um, a certain education, a four-year degree, five-year degree for you to work for them. Um, even um, a two-year vocational um, course, you, if you're a senior high, you can already work um, abroad if you belong to the tech voc track, no? as long as the company agrees and the country agrees and your age is already allowed to work then there is actually um, no, um, there is just a low cost of education. You, your parents need not to spend a lot for you to work in this industry. Um, perhaps you will, um, you will invest in laptops now for you to, to, to learn or for you to, um, to, um, to study. But it is already given no, that schools have computer laboratories for you to work on. And so there is just a low cost of education as compared to other courses, no? or as compared to other degrees, um, you have to pay for, or you have to buy equipment, you have to buy materials, you have to buy ingredients for you to finish a subject. But here um, in information technology, um, usually the school already pays for subscriptions or for licenses. Although you have um, lab and lecture no, usually in your classes because I myself, I'm also a teacher right now online. So um, we consider these investments as just cheap investments, although we will really um, reap the rewards after. All right. Then there is better income as what I have uh, presented earlier. No? Um, the the companies that consider, they consider our labor um, cost already as cheap, but when you work in the Philippines and you earn such amounts, uh, ang cheap nila is already um, extravagant or is already more than enough for us to earn a living 
So we really have, um, when you work in the IT BPM industry, there is better income. Um, there are even chances that you work multiple, no? Especially if you are a freelancer, you don't, you don't only work for one certain company. For as long as your time can do it, as long as you can manage your own time, then you can um, work for a lot of companies, for a lot of brands, um, for a lot of um, businesses. And so when you work more, that also entails and that is also tantamount to having better income as compared to other jobs, no? Other daytime jo jobs na 8 to 5 p.m. And also when you work sa IT BPM industry, there are also chances that you work um, on graveyard shift, no? On GY or, or at midnight. But that also means that you will earn more because there is uh, what we call as night differential. No, in our labor um, policies, if you already work beyond um, the usual daytime, then you earn more and you get um, more percentage. So that also means that you will get better income. Then um, when you work in the IT BPM, um, you are in demand. Um, here in the Philippines, the demand is higher than supply. Meaning to say, there are a lot of job opportunities. Just yesterday, no, I even searched for online jobs, PH related to information technology. And uh, in their website, they, it populated a result of 200,000 available jobs right now, or just yesterday, <laughs> right yesterday. But still, the supply is low. Um, although um, Chad says that um, um, it is the number one enrolled um, um, number one enrolled degree for males, well, the fifth for females, still the supply is lacking. Um, the graduates are not that high, are not that enough to really um, to work for the available jobs and to work for the available opportunities. That is also the reason why um, some IT professionals work in two or three jobs, in multiple jobs all at the same time, because the demand is really high, but the supply, the people, the number of people is not that enough, okay? Um, as compared to the um, demand, okay? And you are really in demand. Perhaps when you graduate, um, you will not be the ones looking for your job, but it is the job that will find you. <laughs> you just have to post perhaps your... Um, you have to post your profile in LinkedIn or in, um, in Upwork.ph and then jobs, um, jo um, it, is, it will be the HR or the em employers who will message you or who will contact you to work for them. And it is not actually you who will be um, the one seeking for your job. That is one good thing about the IT BPM industry. Then the IT BPM is the industry of the future. Who would have known no? um, before um, decades ago, years ago, centuries ago, um, people would rely on agriculture, in crops, and in tourism perhaps. But look at how um, COVID affected, no? Nawala ang tourism. Or there is tourism but na stop or restricted, and perhaps um, um, we are doing away from the agriculture as the main source of our economy, of our Philippine income, no? And so um, we are looking forward that ITBPM will be um, the standard in the industry in the future. There will be a lot of, as technology arises, so as the jobs, so as the opportunities that are available there are even, ano no, may mga nagsasabi, there are those who say that in the future, um, the next world war will not be about um, um, gasoline or petroleum, it, diba? or perhaps um, territories because world wars before happened because of some territorial disputes or territorial claims, but the world war, simba ko, God forbid, no? the next world war daw will be about um, data. There will be a war on data. There will be a war on technology. Even right now, no, as, as I am speaking, 
there are a lot of DDoS attacks happening right now from country to country. There are anonymous hackers who deface websites. And so in the future, thou, um, this is now the um, infant stage of the next world war. It will be about um, data and technology. And so um, we believe that um, the ITBPM is the industry of the future. Gone are the days, no? Now we have to work physically. We are now in an era where um, we work um, remotely. We don't have to go to the workplace. Uh, we don't need transportation services to go there. We can just work at home. We, maybe we, after a few seconds, when we wake up, we already have. Uh, we, are, we will already be working. Then there is freelancing and freedom of time, wherein. Um, um, if, if you work as a freelancer, you have a flexibility of your time, no? You have um, the freedom of your time. Then that also means that you have um, a work-life balance, diba? You can spend more time um, with your families, um, even OFWs, no? Here in the ICT, we are trying to change the term OFW, which is um, overseas Filipino workers, no? Into... OFW 2.0 or um, online Filipino workers, wherein Filipinos' parents, um, fathers and mothers need not to leave the country no, to work. Um, they just have to stay here. They can spend time. They can spend their Sundays here with their families. They can watch their children grow because of the IT BPM industry. And especially if you work um, as a freelancer, then you have your freedom of time. Usually, you no know, um, um, employees try to quit their jobs. They leave their jobs because um, they don't have freedom of time. Um, they don't have work-life balance. I know of some fellow teachers who quit their jobs to become freelancers, online freelancers, because um, they earn more and they can spend more time with their families because they are family men and family women. And so that's one good thing in pursuing a career in IT BPM industry. Another is working remotely, as what I have mentioned. You need not to go physically to a certain workplace to do your stuff, to do your thing, to work, to earn. You just have to stay at home. That is possible, especially in this COVID pandemic. No? We have realized that so much that what we can work from home can, um, can be done. Um, without having to visit your workplace, that is possible. Our contact center, our call center agents, no, they are even asked to just work from home as long as they have good internet or stay in, in stable internet connection. They are provided with the laptops and computers from their companies. So they are just working remotely. Then there is job diversity. And so this means that um, there are diverse jobs available. There are Really, um, so many fields to choose pr from. There are so many, um, so many um, specializ specializations in IT that you can choose from. And also in job diversity, um, this is also where we can inject the indirect jobs. No? Um, the one I mentioned, if there is um, a BPO company or a BPO locator, um, operating 24-7, and so there are also indirect jobs that are mushrooming around such um, building, such company. There are 24-7 restaurants, 24-7 convenience stores, because they have customers who work 24-7, or there, there are um, businesses, or there are BPOs that operate 24-7, and so they, ha they can, um, they have customers, they have um, possible and potential income. Um, to, 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 to sell their products, right? um, So there is job diversity. So what are the various information technology careers? Um, earlier no, in our webinar, I asked you, um, what, you um, what you want to become, what are the job um, posts that you want in the future? And so I'll be discussing them, it's one, no? So we have the IT, IT technical support. Um, this was um, my first job actually was um, a teacher. And then eventually I became a technical support engineer. 
for um, a BPO or KPO knowledge process outsourcing in Dumaguete City, employing that time 3,000 um, 3, um, people with about 2,000 computers to service on. So I was once a technical support engineer in, we would um, troubleshoot, we would um, solve problems in terms of um, the hardware and software and some basic stuff about um, networking and systems administration. We are actually the front line, no? We are the, we are the front end. We are the ones who go, who went to the um, to the production area, to the production floors, and check if why a computer malfunctions, why why um, we cannot connect to the internet. So you can become um, a technical support um, specialist in the future. Then we also have systems administration when, when perhaps um, you are in a company and there is a certain system that is employed um, as a backbone in the entire company, then you can be a system administrator. You're the ones in charge for um, enrolling a certain account, for deleting, for managing and, admis and administering the um, entire systems of the company. So you can become a systems administrator. Then you can also become a network engineer, right? um, um, You will be the ones in charge in the network topologies of um, the company. Um, you will work a lot with um, the crimping tool <laughs> and with um, the LAN cables, um, Wi-Fi routers, and other equipment for you to be connected intranet and in the internet, no? Um, so perhaps you can become a network engineer someday in charge of the intra and internet um, connection of your company, of the company where you will be working on. Then of course, perhaps most of you or some of you are into this, into programming and software development, really highly paid no, for you to finish a project, um, for you to, to finish a program of a certain company and you become flexible now once you are done with a certain um, project, you can, um, you, can, um, you can choose another project and go for another um, company to give your services on. And really the, um, the, the, um, you really are paid so much when you do programming and software development, okay? Then we have game development and animation. We have a lot of talented animators and game developers in the country. So sa mga nag-mobile legends dyan, perhaps you can um, develop your own um, game in the future and who knows your game will be a hit. Who can remember, I don't know, um, who can remember Flappy Birds before? Na, nabuhatan nyo ba yun? It was um, it was created by a Vietnamese. I think he, he was a young Vietnamese out of boredom. Created such, but um, such game became an instant hit, a really big hit. And so um, this is part and parcel of the IT BPM industry. Okay, game development and animation. So in animation, there is a lot. Um, Maybe some of you have known of Barangay 143 right now, no? It's a locally produced, I think it is the first TV series, animation TV series in the Philippines. So slowly but surely animation will become um, one of the, although it is not um, the, the primary mover in the IT BPM industry, but someday I believe that animation will become um, one of the breeding points for the IT BPM industry. Although there are a lot of um, countries who outsource um, in the Philippines to do animation. You might not know it, no, but um, there are even um, animes in Japan that have been outsourced in the Philippines, especially with the companies of to Toei. I'm not sure how it is pronounced, Toei, but they outsource um, their animation needs in the country. All right? 
Then we also have multimedia and graphics. If you really, if you are very much comfortable with um, working with um, Adobe Photoshop or Illustrator, you, if you create posters, if you um, um, if you also are good in ed video editing, mga same day editing no, in um, in weddings and in other ceremonies or occasions, then you can become someday a multimedia or graphics specialist or graphics designer. Okay, that is also part of the IT BPM industry. Mga artsy, artsy, mga RT, artsy, RT um, students no, who are very creative. Then you can venture out into this um, field in the future. Then we also have the information security or cyber security specialists, no? wherein um, these um, people protect their companies or their organizations from possible threats or attack, attacks from, from other intruders. Um, they also do penetration testing and ethical hacking um, to check if, they're, um, if they really are protected, if their companies are protected, okay? So this is actually the subject that I'm teaching right now in my part-time um, um, teaching online. So mga ethical hacking and penetration testing, then that is part of your job in the future to make sure that vulnerabilities are patched. Okay, mga IT sec na mga professionals in the future. Then web developers or designers, of course, um, you can, um, if, if you are into um, web programming, HTML, CSS, PHP, diba? if you are good at that, if you are both creative and you are good in programming at the same time, I would suggest that you venture out in the field of web development and design because, diba, um, you have the front end and how your um, your website appears, and we also have the back end on how um, the the tags or the codes work well behind no in web development and design or in a website. So I suggest that you would um, venture out in this field someday in web development and design, especially in in interfaces no that can work both in. Um, both in um, mobile devices, in smartphones, and in desktop computers. Okay? So, I think, uh, may I siguro remind lang our participants no, to, don't forget to mute yourselves. No? Kasi parang may nag-overlap of sounds. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Then we also have database administration. You can be database admins in the future, no? Um, especially if you are so good in Oracle and other um, databases in um, linking and connecting um, even your web applications to databases. And if you want to, if you know how to um, enroll accounts um, and you know the language behind databases, then um, you can become a database administrator in the future. Okay? You are really um, paid a lot for this. Then software testing or systems analysis. Perhaps um, you know a, a, a bit of a background in programming. Um, then you can become a software tester wherein there are um, programmers who develop their programs or their applications and you are the one um, providing a critic or um, you are the one um, testing or checking if it works well, if it works fine and chances are if, if it does not then you will be the QA or quality um, analyst no? wherein you would make some modifications you would analyze um, in which certain code or in which certain line needs some improvements so that's the part where you can become a software tester or a systems analyst in the future. 
Then there are also um, IT, IT consultancy um, jobs in the IT BPM sector. Um, you can become um, CTOs now. Before we have CEOs, um, chief executive officers, that we also have um, CIOs or chief um, information officers. But now the trend now is that we have the CTO or the chief technology officers wherein they are the head or they, they are the ones in charge of, um, of the IT infrastructure in a certain company and you are in the C-level or executive level. So you, you really are paid so much good, um, good um, paybacks or paychecks because all you need to do is to, to render your service. If you, you just have to judge if this um, process works well if this um, ISP or this provider is a good option, then you can provide your consultancy jobs. Then you can also become, even before I became a technical support engineer, I was um, a copy editor <clears throat> for, um, for IT books or authors in the IT industry. Um, they also create articles or they write books. So I was a copy editor before for this wherein I would check not only the grammar, the syntax, but I'd also check if their contents are true and correct. So that is also part of IT consultancy. Then digital strategy or digital marketing, diba? we have a lot of brands and businesses who are using social media right now to, um, to boost their um, businesses to make their um, enterprises known for globally, not only locally, no? So you can become a digital marketer or you can become a digital strategist wherein um, you become the social media manager. You're the ones posting. You can also, um, you're the ones in charge of the, of the analytics, whether um, there are certain views or there are um, um, enough, um, um, viewers or there are enough or, or if um, if it has reached if if the post has reached um, other audience or enough audience then you can become um, a digital strategist or marketer now tips when pursuing information technology careers okay so i will give you some tips when someday you are already in the it field then these are some tips um, these are some also personal tips coming from me as I've been in the IT industry for quite some time already. Number one, no, there is a meme, no? There is an, there is an employer um, putting all um, qualifications that he needs um, for a certain IT professional. And then a text goes, dear employer, you're already hiring the entire team. Because that is so true that in the IT field, you don't have to master all fields. You might, you might be good in programming, but you are not good in graphics. Then um, it doesn't mean that you have to master programming, graphics, all at the same time. Okay? Um, perhaps you are good in website um, design, but you are not good in the technical support, no? You, you don't know how to connect um, or, or the SSID of a Wi-Fi could not be seen in, in your um, PC and you don't know how to do or you don't know what to do for you to be able to connect. It doesn't mean that you really have to be expert on such. Um, let me fix my background first. <laughs> you don't have to be expert on such because IT is such a very big field. It is, there, there, there are even some um, countries, no? And there are even some schools here in the Philippines that their IT programs have specialization, like IT major in graphics design, IT major in web development. It is because IT is such a big field, okay? And you don't have to master all fields. Um, you just have to focus on one. Although it doesn't mean that you will not study anymore. Oh, Ma'am or sir, hindi na ako mag-aaral ng programming because sabi naman ni Sir Josh, I don't have to master all fields. That is wrong. You have to know the basics. Okay? You, don't, you have um, to still study because you have to know 
of what goes behind something because in information technology, um, it is, everything is interlinked. Okay? So for example, you're a website designer. Um, you are very good in PHP. But remember that in a website, appearance is what is being seen by your target audience. And so um, the appearance must be pleasing, must be pleasant to the eyes. And so it doesn't mean that you have to focus on the principles of um, the appearance or of the layouting, but you have to know the basics. You have to know that um, in designing a poster, there must only be three major colors, diba? or even um, when you design um, an application, there must be no multiple colors, so everything is interlinked. So you must, uh, you don't have to master all fields, but you have to know the basics. Then there is no overnight success. It doesn't mean that once you, um, once you go for, uh, or once you graduate and you go for a job, it doesn't mean that you will be automatically um, hired. Okay, remember that there is a strong uh, competi competition also. Even if the demand is high, but the supply is low, but still there, you have um, competitors, you have competitions, and so there is no overnight success. I myself, um, um, I think I've already mentioned this earlier, um, I first started as an IT teacher, but before that I, I entered um, law school, but I said that I'm tired of studying already, so I, I got my first job as an IT teacher. But um, um, actually, there is a shed standards right now no, that once you become a teacher in college, um, it is a must that you must have industry experience. So I went, to, um, um, I went back to my hometown in Dumaguete from Dipolog after being a teacher for a year. Um, I, I applied to one of the biggest um, BPO companies there, but there was no vacancy in the IT group. So... I, um, I, I got, um, I instead, because I was in dire need of uh, money already, so I became a copy editor. Although, um, although um, what I was copy editing, no, I was checking for the grammar, syntax, and for the content was IT subjects or IT books and articles. But still, the job, although I belong to the IT BPM industry, it was not directly an, an IT um, service job because it was a copy editing job. So there's no overnight success. You have to, um, it doesn't mean that um, success would really come to you right then and there. So it took me two years no, to be noticed by the IT department. They noticed my um, capability and my talents because the IT department there was, um, there was an IT week something um, for the company. And so they were the host, the IT group. And there was a quiz B, IT quiz B. And I was sent by, the, by my department since they knew that I was an IT graduate. So they sent me to participate in the quiz bowl. And uh, I, I was the winner of such. I won the IT quiz bowl. And so the IT group, because there was, a, there was a vacancy in their group, they hired me internally. They pulled me out from my copy editing job in the same company and hired me as a technical support engineer. So it took time. It took me two years to be noticed and to be um, recognized, okay? Now you also have to keep updated with the current trends. So what you, what you have learned now might be obsolete in the future, no? During our time, um, the programming language that was really fed to us was um, C. I'm not sure if you're, you still have C language as part of your curriculum. Um, we used C language, C, C sharp, C++, but now um, the C language is kind of obsolete, although there are still companies that use C, but um, they are now at par or other programming languages are now at par from um, the languages that we learned in school. No? So we have to keep um, updated with the current trends. Okay. Even before we, we studied assembly language, such a pain in the head, no? Move AH, OH, a very low-level machine language. But now, who studies 
assembly language, no? except for perhaps computer scientists who really have to delve with the uh, machine language. Okay? And then, um, so you have to keep up with the current trends. Then social skills also matter, although there are some times that you have to work alone, no? but still you have to communicate. Attitude is still important. For you to get recognized and noticed by employer, employers, you must also be socially skillful. Then get your hands dirty. So what does, that, what does the, this mean? So you have to apply your learning. It's not just about theories. It's not just about learning from the books or by the books on how to program. It is really applying. No? Get your hands dirty. Parang ano lang, no? Plantito and plantita, no? Or just like plants. When you, um, when you grow plants, no? Um, what do you do? Do you just stare at it? Um, do you just look at it grow? No, it will wither and die if you do not feed it with water, if you do not cultivate it, if you do not um, get the caterpillars off from the leaves. Diba? So get your hands dirty. Then don't be a lone wolf. Um, in IT, there is teamwork, although you give your individual um, contribution. No? But in the um, IT BPM industry, you have to work as a team. Okay? Then you must remember that you still have a life because there are chances that um, you have to work on a certain project. Remember that you have a family, you have friends. So once you're in the ITBPM industry, do work-life balance, okay? Then don't expect to learn everything in classes, all right? What you learn in the four walls of your classroom are only um, a pinch of um, what it is out there in the real arena, no? Um, you just learn the basics. Even when I was um, when I was in the um, when I was a technical support engineer, I didn't know how to do this. I didn't know how to do that. This was not taught to me in my classes, and so you have to get your hands dirty, and you really have to study more. If you thought that studying ends when you graduate, you are wrong because the more that you will study, the more that you will learn when you graduate, okay? Sorry to uh, burst your bubble, but that is true. You will have to study more and more. So with that, you have to take school seriously. Uh, ano? Although um, I have mentioned no, that you don't need a diploma in some countries and even in some companies, no, there are even contact center agents who finish two years, but they are hired. But you still need to take school seriously because if you want to get promoted, if you want to earn more, if you want salary increase, there is a must that you finish your degree and you have to earn a diploma because you don't get in the ITBPM industry, although you can be hired for the entry level positions, but as years grow the number, it is uh, not, uh, it must not be that you stay at the entry level position or you have to level up. And so for you to be there is that you have to have your diploma. So. If you think of quitting school now, that is very wrong, okay? So studying the night before a deadline will not work. It will really not work. You have to really exert effort days or months before um, a project deadline is, is due because um, you don't learn things overnight, diba? Um, you don't study Java tonight and expect an output of a Java, a complete Java application tomorrow. So you really have to study um, more and more, not just once, just before the deadline, no? because we are procrastinators, that is very wrong. Then learning the 21st century skills um, is a must. So um, 21st um, century skills um, involve um, learning and innovation skills, digital literacy skills, and career and life skills. So aside from the technical skills that you know of, programming, graphics design, web development, it is also a must that um, um, you know other life skills, soft skills, the way you communicate. No, because commonly when you belong to the IT and the engineering fields, no, um, we are known to be not good in communicating we are not good. We are aloof. We are not good in conversing. We are silent. We are, we are as if mutes, no? 
if we work in our fields, but it is a must. Um, employers try to choose you if you you convince them if if you are able to speak with them. Okay. Then also, I will tell you the drawbacks when working in an IT um, career in the IT BPM industry, no? Because maybe um, perhaps um, you might expect a lot of good things, but I want to tell you now, as early as now, that are also downsides aside from your health, no? And even me, I am already wearing eyeglasses because since time immemorial, I've been, uh, I've been facing the computer. And also, if you work in the ITBPM sector, chances are you work midnight or graveyard shifts. Aside from that, there are also other drawbacks, just like um, work tends to be deadline driven. You have a project to do. You're asked to create an application program. Um, there is deadline. You have to finish this in two months, three months, just like in classes, diba? so you're already trained. But to reiterate the um, work in the ITBPM industry, is deadline driven. The hours might be long, um, although there are shifting hours now, but there are times that you have to do overtime. When I was working as a technical support engineer, I had to extend, uh, and we call it OTTY, <laughs> overtime thank you, because um, you have to extend a couple of minutes, even up to hours, without um, OT pace. Uh, just to finish um, troubleshooting, just to finish something because your time is off already, but you have to finish something because there is deadline that you have to finish. So that's one of the drawbacks. Also, your personal time might be in interrupted. So that's the thing when you have to extend, we have to do overtime, then your personal time might be interrupted. Okay. Instead of your sleeping time also, you have to study for a certain thing. So just um, a precaution, Harry, um, just a precaution for you in the future. Then you will have to deal with a lot of angry people. And usually these angry people do not understand information technology. <laughs> they would expect you to finish um, a lot of things. They expect you to do this and do that, but they do not know um, the processes that lurk behind um, usually these are directors or site directors or heads of organizations to expect you for an outcome. They tend to be angry because they, you don't meet the expectations, but they do not know because they are not IT people. So <laughs> expect in the future that we'll, um, you will have to face irate and angry people. And even in the contact center industry, no? uh, usually um, Customers call because of um, they have problems in their services, and so um, call contact center agents answer irate people. Then people will expect you to fix their computers and devices. Um, this is a fact. I always usually get this even before when I, when I was not a grad, when I was still studying. Di ba IT ka? Pakiayos mo naman to. Diba, IT ka, pakiayos mo naman ang microwave, ang washing machine, ang TV, ayaw umandar. But they need some education <laughs> that not all, um, we are not technicians, not all are technicians. The one I said that you don't have to master all fields, these people should understand that um, we, our um, specialization is on programming, is on website design, is on um, in database administration. So please, people, do not expect me or do not expect us to fix your computers because I'm not a technician. Uh, my field of speci specialization is not on IT um, technical services. So please do not let me fix your computers. Okay? Then people will tell a, a lie, especially if you are, um, if you troubleshoot, no? They will say that, um, um, sinib daw nila sa, um, they saved daw their Microsoft um, Word na document bakit daw nawawala or bakit walang um, wala nang laman but where in fact um, they did not save then there was a, a sudden power interruption then basta um, if you could imagine <laughs> di ba? Um, 
you want to try to diagnose a certain trouble, uh, trouble, there is a certain problem or issue of concern, but people will tell a lie, will make um, some turnarounds, they will not say the truth just to save themselves, no? So expect that in the future. You just have to, to try to get um, when, a people, when, when a certain person is lying or not through perhaps their um, body language, diba? So you will get that a lot in the future. And you will have to pray nothing goes bad. So as you see in this meme, this was us. This is not actually us, but we, we um, when I was still working in the BPO, we would really pray before going into a holiday to, um, to pray that our servers would not break down or else we will not enjoy the holiday. We will report to office physically. Our leaves will be canceled because the servers went down. And so we, we had to pray. <laughs> Nothing goes bad. Okay? So... Um, just a quick na lang, quick um, programs that um, the ICT supports in terms of the IT BPM industry. So I, I am working currently as a project development officer of um, the IT BP, um, ICT Industry Development Bureau of the ICT here in VC2, both covering Region 7 and Region 8. No? So I will present to you um, some of the programs that we support under the digital PH <laughs> na umbrella. Okay? Um, under, the IC, under the IIDB, this program is tasked to promote, lead, and manage the development, implementation, monitoring, and evaluation of the ICT industry programs that we have in the country. So this program sees to it that the trade and investment opportunities in the ICT sector is promoted, and this includes the country's outsourcing industry, which is part and parcel of the IT BPM industry. So first we have the Digital Cities PH. So... Um, um, we have support for um, local government units. We have support for ICT councils, no? Because we believe these are our partners for us to grow, for our IT BPM sector to be to get promoted, no? So we must have a lot of partnerships, not only from the public um, sectors, from the government agencies, or from the local government units, but also with other private institutions, with companies, no? and with organizations. So we have a lot of activities like ICT council creation, we have ICT cl cluster conferences, and we have digital governance awards. No? And as a matter of fact, we have the, recently we have the 25 digital cities that have potentials in the IT BPM industry. No? And so these 25 digital cities will um, be guided by the ICT to promote um, their ICT industry to be the next hubs, no? aside from Manila, Cebu, Davao, Bacolod, Dumaguete, and everywhere else. So in Region 8, we have Tacloban City, who made it in the list. Okay? So we'll have, we, will be, um, we will have promotions, we will be the primar, uh, priority locations for us to develop our ICT industry. Then we also have the Digital Governance Awards, where annually we conduct awards for the best um, IT practicing government units. No? and agencies, so they, practice, they use IT um, software and applications in their business transaction, transactions, in their, um, in their um, operations, so we give awards annually. Then we have the Digital Services PH, so um, this is for the sustained long-term development strategy to further develop the high growth and high value segments of the country's IT BPM industry, so there are a lot of um, um, conferences and seminars that we organize. Animahe Nation for our animators here, no? We support also such. That, uh, there are a lot of sessions and trainings and workshops that um, the Digital Services PH um, concentrate on. Then we have the Digital Startups PH, no? I'm not sure if technopreneurship is part and parcel of your curriculum, although um, we give um, we. Um, we give priority no, to our to the flourishing of our startups, especially that we have the Innovo Innovative Startup Act of 2019 that has been implemented. No? And so there is support coming from three agencies, DTI, DOST, and DICT. And so expect, although we are still um, finalizing the programs, but there will be chances that we'll be um, giving grants, financial grants no, for 
um, startups. Kayo, if you graduate, you can create your own startup among your classmates. So we have um, programs for such. We even have the Philippine Startup Challenge. No, It is an annual um, competition, although it has been um, um, paused for a while because of the COVID. Although um, if you have your thesis or capstone projects, mga teachers, mga moms and sir, you can nominate that for the Philippine Startup Challenge. And who knows, your students will win nationally. No, And um, prizes at stake include grants and study tours. I believe um, mobile phones from Huawei and and pre pre COVID um, there was um, um, a free educational tour in China for you to observe their startup scene. So there are a lot of boot camps and Sir Evan is our rainmaker for Region Eight. So Sir Sir Evan Kiros, Sir K, the I we call him Sir K. Um, he is um, the person behind the success of startups in Region 8. So we have invited Sir K to our um, startup ideation workshops and programs. Okay. Then finally, we have the digital jobs page, although um, this has been transitioned to another bureau, na, no? but um, we still support the digital jobs page because we also, um, after, um, we are also after the creation of jobs in the countryside, not only in the major digital hubs, no, like um, Manila, Cebu, and Davao. So not only in those who are in the IT fields no, or in their IT as their undergraduate degrees, they're also um, perhaps even those who have not graduated, no, but they want to become digital marketers or digital strategists for brands. We offer a training for such, the Digital Jobs PH. And as a matter of fact, just a few months back, we had the online um, course in Almeria, Almeria or Almeria in Biliran. Um, you were our location. There were graduates coming from such area. And so with that, um, thank you very much for listening. I am already, by the way, um, a YouTuber. So I have um, some tech, tech um, lessons there, um, tech tutorials. So. To our students, if you want some help, perhaps I have discussed something there. Um, you might want to check my YouTube channel. That's Tech Talks with Pambansang IT Guy. And that ends my um, presentation. Sorry, I think I extended. I was asked to um, finish at 11.30. <laughs> but I um, ako to speak. And so I think I can give back the floor to uh, to Miss Joy or to Sir Kit, Sir Evan. Uh, let me check. Maybe you have questions. Thank you so much, Sir Domen. So if you have questions, please uh, type in them in the chat box, or you may raise your hands for, so that. Sir Joshua can address them. Thank you, sir. Okay, sorry for extending. <laughs> no, it's okay. Uh, we started also late because of the internet problem. So um, it's, it's really fine. I, thank you for a very informative uh, discussion on the opportunities of uh, IT graduates no, in, in the field. Ma'am Joy? Okay, so again, sir, thank you so much for that very informative discussion and various opportunities. And so guys, you have now an idea in what specific career path you want to pursue in the future. And to show our gratitude to our resource speaker, we humbly present the certificate of recognition, which a citation reads, Uh, wait lang. Nakita ka, Joy?
Sesenet G. Okay, so let us give a virtual applause to our research speaker, Mr. Joshua E. Dumen. Sir, thank you so much for giving us your time. And we did learn a lot. So I hope we could see you um, on our future uh, activity, Sir Joshua. Yes, yes, of course. Um, thank you for the invitation, Sir K. And I enjoyed. <laughs> And I hope I can visit physically, you know, someday. When we our, would be happy um, to welcome you here, sir, sa school namin po. Thank you, everyone, and Miss Joy, okay. and to the dean. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir, Josh. Okay, and that concludes our first plenary session. So um, we will now have our lunch break. Okay, so um, I think before that, um, everybody is turn on, requested to turn on their camera. <laughs> okay, so everybody is requested to turn on their camera and yeah, turn on their camera. And then please do... Uh... So, uh, guys, please turn on your camera so that we can have our photo ops with our resource speaker. So, on my count, uh, smile, one, two, three, and uh, wait, kayo, wala ko na ka on day sa own camera. <laughs> so, one, two, three, and smile. Okay, another frame. Uh, one, two, three, and okay. So thank you so much, guys. See you this one o'clock p.m. because we will be talking about data analytics and algorithms. So uh, have your lunch and then be right back at exactly one o'clock p.m. So see you. Thank you, Sir Joshua. Thank you, Sir K, and to everyone.